testing is this emerging technology. It is one of the fastest growing businesses. It's going from about a, a $25 billion business at the beginning of this decade to being about a $90 billion business at the end of this decade. Hello and welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn De Guzman with Investing News Network. Our guest today is Hector Bremner, CEO of Avricor Health, and we're discussing innovations in healthcare technology. Hello, Hector. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Good. Good to have you here. Thank you. So uh, let's start off with an overview of Avricor Health and your value proposition. Avricor Health is uh, innovator in the pharmacy practice where we're bringing technologies into the community pharmacy to support their evolution into a more service-based healthcare uh, service. Uh, and so what's exciting is globally, the pharmacy business is a $1.6 trillion business in Canada alone, it's over 60 billion. And it's going through this powerful transition where they're going away from just simply distributing medications, for example, where you just simply pick up your prescription, to receiving many more services, including um, minor ailment supports like you can get in Alberta and Ontario, uh, prescription renewals, but most importantly, uh, chronic disease screening and management. And so we're providing them the tools to help them transition into this exciting new era. Yeah, so can you talk a bit more about that technology that you're providing? So it's just to give us, uh, our, our audience, uh, a bit of an overview of that. So our primary offering is HealthTab. HealthTab is a turnkey solution for the pharmacy to be able to offer point of care testing. And so we partnered with Abbott uh, a couple of years ago to be able to integrate their instruments into the system. Uh, we provide a cloud-based, fully integrated system where uh, the data in real time is uh, taken from the instrument. Uh, and of course, the test is occurring right there on site. Uh, the data goes from the instrument immediately, um, puts it through uh, some clinical evaluation in the sense that it's looking at the results uh, in um, some ways that are specific to the patient. And then what it does is it uh, produces the result for the patient, the healthcare provider, uh, and even researchers on the back end in real time. And why this matters is, is that uh, HealthTab is now ensuring that people uh, can uh, take more control of their health journey and get better health outcomes because of it. Because the reality is, is that uh, while the dominant story in the news over the last, you know, uh, not just during COVID, but of course, after COVID has been the fact that uh, healthcare as usual, disease care is really is what we call it, um, the, the, which is to say that we are focused solely on when the incident happens, when the heart attack happens, when the stroke happens. Much of this is preventable if you can get to the patient early, if you can a, effectively communicate what the risks are, develop a plan that's specific to them, and then keep them on. And so uh, there's a bunch of things happening uh, right now from you know, patients knowing more and demanding more uh, service to there being limitations of the uh, hospital and, and physician um, universe being able to serve the demand, uh, technology making it easier, and of course, government responding with uh, policy changes that make it possible. All of this is coming together uh, as we speak, and it's a very exciting time, and it means that HealthTab has a very bright future in front of it. Right, and preventative healthcare is definitely uh... Uh, part of that is patient, the whole paradigm around patient-centered care, right? And multidisciplinary approach to patient care. What role do you see pharmacists uh, or pharmacies play in, in this whole paradigm? Yeah, it's an interesting question because I think one of the great many challenges in my background is, is government uh, as well. I, I I had a chance to work in the BC government as an advisor to cabinet ministers and then also uh, was elected myself. And having worked around public health care issues from a government point of view, it is always been frustrating that the healthcare system is it's sort of always built to spend more than it has. So you can increase funding, but it's always going to be in a deficit. It's just in the inherent nature of the way that it's set up. And 
internally for some time, people have known that change needs to happen. And what change means is not simply just dumping more money into the system status quo, but really looking at innovation. And innovation doesn't always mean technology. Sometimes it means allowing people on the healthcare team, and there's a lot of the people that are a part of those teams, to do more in their role. And one of the people more, most critical in all of this has been the pharmacist. The pharmacist is traditionally medically trained. Um, they essentially go to, not essentially, but they go to medical school. The, the difference between a, a physician and a pharmacist is that they, they don't really do, a, phys, a pharmacist doesn't do the practicum work and then doesn't do the hands-on work. They, they stay focused on the medications. And this is critical because they are the experts, they know the medications, they obviously have a long-term relationship with the patient, they often see the patient more regularly than even the physician does. Many people don't have a family physician and they don't see the same doctor every time. So the doctor doesn't even know, um, you're, they're seeing you fresh for the first time where your pharmacist has seen you for 20 years and they know who you are. And so this person, the pharmacist, has been grossly underutilized due to the fact that their license hasn't allowed them to do much more than simply provide you some very general advice around the medication and simply serve you in that moment in a retail sense. But wisely, um, after many years and much studying of all this, and certainly the pandemic uh, was the breakthrough moment where uh, the pharmacist was the front line of care for many of us, and they really filled major gaps, they proved that they could do this work safely and effectively, and that it would be a valuable um, efficiency added to the system is to be able to have the community pharmacist, which is readily available to people. You can walk in the door and get care on demand. And you have these medical professionals that are there and they have the expertise to let them do the work that they know how to do. And so they're going to be able to shoulder some, some of the load that is really breaking the back of the general practice, uh, which is to say the family doctor. More and more people, as I mentioned, don't have a family doctor and the family doctors that are practicing can't handle the load. And so people are ending up often in the hospital system and we don't want them in our hospitals. Uh, hospitals are, are really for should, should be for the most acute episodes and not for um, you know anything less than that. And a physician's time is really best spent doing diagnosis and direct treatment. But those in-between moments where the, the person's health status hasn't really clinically changed very much, it's just sort of the maintenance moments, it's the ongoing relationship of healthcare, they have, the pharmacist has the biggest role to play. And so um, I'll close the, my uh, thought on this and pointing out to people as well, you know, in Canada, obviously we have a publicly health, publicly funded healthcare system. Uh, it's Critical for people to understand that healthcare dollars don't just go to healthcare. They go to buildings, people, post-it notes, papers, you know, it goes to all the things that are in the building. And I think often as Canadians, we're disconnected from that fact that healthcare dollars isn't just going directly to care. But there's a new model that we have to be looking at very seriously, and pharmacy is a great place to do this, is where um, the private enterprise can pay for the post-it notes and the staff and the building and run the practice in exchange for a fee for the service. And that means our tax dollars would be going towards healthcare. And so this is really efficient. It's really effective. And it makes a lot more sense when we look at the uh, financial constraints of being able to uh, meet the growing demand for healthcare uh, and do so in a way that uh, really puts dollars on the ground and gets to people. It doesn't get sort of just trapped up in the system, but really gets to the ground. And so we think the pharmacist uh, plays a critical role in that. Uh, of course, they need the technology to do it. And that's why we're so focused on this. Right. And there's also that element of patient education when it comes to preventative care, right? So, and pharma pharmacies, I think, have done, uh, you know, performed that, uh, role in, in, in some form or, or another. So how does technology aid, maybe specifically, uh, you know, the, you're offering the the innovations that you, you're providing, how does that aid in terms of patient education and patient taking care of their uh, own health? One of the fastest growing areas of healthcare technology is uh, beyond data and, and that's a big conversation and, and um, other uh, sort of software components to it is point of care testing. 
point of care testing for people that haven't heard the term before just means anything that happens outside of a lab or a hospital but but it's a very general term but it means that it could be like your eye watch uh, that is monitoring a certain health biometrics um your if you're a person with diabetes that maybe you wear a glucose meter or you're pricking your finger regularly that's that's point of care um, but being able to do uh, limited diagnostics and i say limited diagnostics because i want to be very clear that Point of care testing is a long ways away from being able to replace a lab, you know, in companies in the past. And we often um, are not um, shy about uh, the questions about companies like Theranos. Theranos, uh, of course, became uh, very controversial. They tried to claim that uh, they could develop a machine that was going to replace a lab. We're very clear that we think that the role of pharmacy and point of care testing is about screening. Um, it's about support. Uh, so we're not seeing, um, we're not trying to make claims that the lab is going to go away. But why that matters is, is that the lab also is capacitized that it has limitations. And so the point of care has to happen. You have to be able to um, take the pressure off the lab, but you also have to consider really alarming statistics uh, around the fact that when a physician uh, gives a, an individual a rec for a lab result, so they've, they've given them the so-called prescription to go into the lab and get lab work done, the likelihood of an individual using that lab rec is shockingly low that they will not go to the lab. And so and there's a bunch of different factors that come into play into that. People are busy. Um, you know, if you've gone through the whole lab experience once and you've had a lot of time burnt in your day and all the running around, you might not do it again. You, you know, if it's not absolutely critical, you're, you, you know, and, and obviously chronic disease is a slow rolling crisis. So it's, it's not something that people until it's very late uh, really start to take uh, aggressive action on. And so, Point of care testing is this emerging technology. It is one of the fastest growing businesses. It's going from about a, a $25 billion business at the beginning of this decade to being about a $90 billion business at the end of this decade. And so what it means is if you can take technology, and as we do, that is off the shelf, that is widely used, loved and respected, um, tons of research around it, how effective it, it, it is and how um, uh, healthcare professionals trust the results. We're able to take them out of the small labs and, and community um, based uh, physicians offices and move it into the pharmacy. Very different setting for the machine, but by networking them and connecting them to our technology, making them easier to use, making the results and interpretation much easier, both for the patient and for the practitioner. To get back to your uh, the essence of your question is that that simple conversation, being able to get information on demand that you can trust, is the first step to that person's health journey. And there are so many testimonials that we've seen uh, come through over uh, the past year and a half, where um, people who had been really missed by the healthcare system. I'm talking about people that have full-blown diabetes, for example, people are on the verge of a major heart attack or stroke, a major health event, uh, and discovering it there for the first time. And they didn't have to beg anyone to, to give them a lab record. They didn't have to, you know, wait hours in line for a doctor's appointment. They were asked, they were asked by their pharmacist, would you like to have this service? doesn't cost you anything. Sit down, you have a consultation, the test is conducted. And now this information is in the patient's hands. They get to keep their information, of course. They have their own login. They get to use that data as they see fit. But also, pharmacists have also not really had access to this type of information about their patients. They've, they've had um, a lot of historical information about their patients. Maybe they've known what prescriptions they've picked up in the past. They don't really know about how their health is today. And so this is also really welcomed by the pharmacists as they are saying, now we can use our expertise and our skills and be able to make decisions along with the patient that's right for them, keep them on track, um, keep them engaged. Uh, therapy adherence is a, is a term in the uh, drug making world is, is a real challenge. Uh, just because you uh, are able to identify a patient that needs your medication, keeping them on it, and so they have the best outcome is, is very difficult uh, because people fall off. And so that engagement in that relationship with 
technology bridging that gap and that sharing of the information means that it's much more personal for everyone. It's much more tangible. It's realistic and it's actionable. And what we're seeing is people going from being um, in advanced stages, for example, of diabetes. We've seen people with um, blood glucose levels that are uh, practically off the charts, like 11 to as high as 17. Uh, for, for people that don't know, you should be below six. Um, after they have been identified and they've been working with their pharmacists and regularly being checked with health tab, they are able to actually get down into those managed levels of around the six, six and a half. So that's huge. It means a lot. Um, uh, your uh, likelihood of certain cancers, heart attack, stroke is dramatically reduced at that level. And that's good for all of us. Great. I wonder if you could provide your insights on where do you see uh, the gaps are in terms of um, where the government um, can support growth of healthcare or, you know, companies such as yourself or like innovative companies that are providing this sort of um, measures that can close those gaps in health in our healthcare system. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And where the, you know, what are you looking um, for the government to provide more? Well, as we sit here today and we're having this conversation, the federal government of Canada has launched its uh, most recent budget, budget 2023. Uh, in there is quite a bit of new spending, including a new uh, 10-year healthcare funding deal that is being finalized with the provinces. Um, we're hopeful, um, and when I say we, I mean um, people that are both serving pharmacy and, and pharmacy itself. Um, there's a great deal of advocacy being done behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, in, in every channel they can possibly use um, in terms of advocating to government. Uh, and, and again, this is the pharmacy sector is uh, doing a lot of really great work to say, hey, we're here, we should be playing a bigger role. Um, we have information now, thanks to Health Tab, uh, that can show you that in real time that we're having a real impact on patients' lives and that the net result for government would be an investment in pharmacy to do this work, more of this work, directly reimbursing them um, at proper levels for this work, because the cost of simply seeing that patient every 90 days and doing that relatively low cost test compared to the cost of what a heart attack or a stroke costs the system uh, is uh, an exponential difference. So. Uh, I think government now is starting to listen. I think you know we're we're starting to see good movement. Several provinces have announced already that they are uh, willing to change the scope of practice in their particular jurisdictions. Um, in some limited cases, there's some funding uh, for the for the pharmacy. But really, this new deal with the federal government was really critical in putting the new dollars um, that are so desperately needed. So we're bullish and very hopeful that as part of these new dollars that some of it will be going to pharmacy. Uh, I think what government needs to be doing is uh, directly reimbursing the pharmacist for screening of diabetes and heart disease and kidney disease, um, and then having ongoing funding for them to be able to uh, do the work with the patient once they've been identified or been screened to keep them on track. Uh, because when we invest or I should say we're investing in heart attacks and strokes when we're not investing in preventative care. And so this is something that uh, was a hard sell for government up until relatively recently. But I think that uh, given the post-pandemic realities of where we're at, um, where a lot of money was spent during that time, economies have been disrupted, where as we sit here today, you know, the discussion is, you know, will there be a recession? Won't there be a recession? But it won't really matter recession or not, healthcare spending is the one recession-proof area. And government knows this. It's the one area where the, the spending demands are going to continue to increase. The reality is, is we live longer, uh, we have more complex care needs, as the, the term is used, which means um, uh, we have more chronic diseases. Uh, uh, you know, 50% of Canadians over 20 have at least one chronic disease. Uh, one third of Canadians are either pre-diabetic or diabetic. So these numbers are not insignificant. And these are not things like, uh, you know, granted, it's, it's not as uh, from a news perspective and, and the human proclivity to need everything to be a crisis. You know, it, it, we, we love things like pandemics or some sort of new, you know, we love names like bird flu or whatever. But I mean, the reality is, uh, 
it is what is the biggest risk to all of us is the acquired chronic illnesses that are impacting your family, my family, everybody knows somebody that is struggling and, and living with the results of the fact that uh, chronic disease is, is sneaking up on us. And there's a lot of factors that drive it. And the pharmacists can help you with that. They can um, drive you towards mental health supports because we know that there's a direct correlation between stress and, and depression uh, and you know, lifestyle actions that, that lead to other cro chronic diseases. Um, they can get you support if you are diagnosed, um, they can get you on track with the right healthcare professionals and lead you as a part of that team uh, to the right care at the right time and the right place. And so all of this is about making healthcare smarter, uh, that, you know, just because you have a hammer, not everything is a nail. So, you know, people are, we're, we're not just statistics, each and every one of us, we're, um, we're unique. Um, and we know that um, when we're engaged and we're treated in a, in a truly human way, which I think is something the pharmacist is really set up to do well, is when we're treated on this one-to-one -one level, we see a dramatic increase. And the comment was made to me by um, our, our own customers that they're, they're very excited that when a patient experiences health tab for the first time, they were like, they bring like, that patient brings like five people with them back the next time because they're so excited by the, that they were able to receive this service and that it even exists. And so uh, it just proves to us and in, it inspires us and it really energizes us to know that um, there is a gap um, in collaboration with the pharmacy, we can help fill it. And um, it's timely, it's ready, it's now. And we think that everything is going in the right direction uh, to kind of conclude the point here is that um, policy is going in the right direction we're optimistic that the new funding um, announcements uh, are, are uh, coming in the relatively near future. We're very bullish on that. And we know um, by major announcements by almost every major pharmacy chain in Canada, the US and globally, they're all really embracing this new world of services. They're making major investments. They're entirely shifting their business models. They're all running headfirst towards services. So uh, we think we're in the right space um, and that um, it's unfortunately took a pandemic for people to realize how critical the pharmacy could be, but we're here now. And, um, you know, I think uh, everybody's on the right track. That's great. So uh, what can investors expect from Avricor Health for 2023? Well, we're going to see uh, steady growth. We think throughout the balance of this year, demand is going to ramp up significantly as we grow the number of locations, um, more pharmacy groups coming on board. We obviously are pushing towards uh, becoming a global platform. We don't just view ourselves as, although we're proudly Canadian as a company, this in Canada has been a great place to innovate and, and incubate. We do see really exciting markets opening up in front of us on the international stage. So uh, throughout the balance of this year, you can see more growth. Last year, we had a, a fantastic year with over $2 million in revenue. Um, this year, we anticipate to, to well exceed that. Um, we also um, just recently had announced that uh, we're currently at over 532 locations that have had their systems deployed and those are all coming on online now. And we're also very excited that um, we are deploying 100 ID nows, which is a new device for us to deploy at scale, um, which is to say, uh, I've talked a lot about chronic disease uh, and that's done with a specific machine called the Affinion 2 from Abbott, but uh, we're deploying another Abbott device which does virological testing, which is um, uh, a confirmed molecular test on site. So uh, this means uh, that patients can be strep, uh, uh, tested for strep infections in real time in the pharmacy and uh, people that, um, you know, can, 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 first of all, can have direct intervention and, and get the right medication that they need at that moment. But there's a flip side to that. And um, uh, again, you know, government has been very concerned for a lot of years and medical professionals have been concerned for a lot of years of the overuse of antibiotics. So 
it's also an opportunity to show people because we've all had this interaction. I, you know, I go to the doctor, I'm experiencing something, they just give you antibiotics. And uh, so the, the nice thing is the pharmacist can say, well, no, we've confirmed that it's, it's virological, it's not, a, it's bacterial. So, you, you, you know, we can steer people away from the overuse of antibiotics, which is a good thing for all of us, um, get them the right medication at the right time and the right service at the right time. So um, very excited by that. So um, that's another thing that I think uh, the investment community can expect from us is um, diversification of our services, more partners, um, greater growth and expansion, and um, you know us continuing to march down our path of being the most dominant player in point of care testing from a networked point of view in community pharmacy. Right, lots of... Um... Great and exciting things ahead for the company. Thank you for uh, sharing your insights today, Hector. Thank you. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thanks. And thank you for watching, everyone. Join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insights.